Hi folks, my name is Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you some of the new things in Construct 3 release 276. First up, let's dive into sublayers, which is one of the major new features in this release. Previously you may have noticed that the layers list is a flat list. So here I've got the ghost shooter example with different parts of the level split onto different layers with different purposes such as background and main for the player and all the monsters. Now uh, if you want to organize your layers uh, more conveniently uh, you can now um, use sub layers which are a bit like organizing your layers into a uh, folder and so here I'm just creating a layer called gameplay and I'm moving all the main game layers uh, inside of that and so now I've got the UI layer where you can see the um, uh, the text is and there's the game player uh, with three uh, sorry the gameplay layer with three sub layers for the actual uh, game that appears now this will look and work exactly like it did before so that's a useful uh, tool for organizing your layers where things get interesting is when you add effects to these layers suppose that you wanted a radial blur effect um, to emphasize something in your game and you wanted it to apply to all three of these things in the gameplay but not the text on the UI layer Previously this would have meant adding the same effect to all three layers and then the runtime would have had to process that effect three times which is quite expensive uh, for some effects. Um, so now you can do this more efficiently and more easily by adding the effect to the uh, parent layer, the layer which all of these sub layers come under. So now if I choose the gameplay layer and I'm going to add a radial uh, blur effect, there we go and so now this will process the effect once on the gameplay layer uh, and that layer includes all of the content of the sub layers beneath it so now if i preview the game uh, you can see that everything has the radial blur effect applied except for the ui layer where so the text does not appear um, distorted by this effect and this is processing the effect just once so it's a much more efficient way of doing it uh, compared to previously this is actually a really powerful way to structure effects in your uh, projects. And just to show this off, I've got a uh, another demo. Uh, this is what the um, multiple colored shadow lights example, um, now how it now works with sub layers. I'll just preview it so you can see how it works. So there's three different color lights using Shadowcaster, and you can see the um, shadows all interacting with uh, each lighting effect casting its own shadow. This is now done uh, with sub layers. So you can see there's now a uh, main layer with um, ca casters as a sub layer and the background. And now there's also a lights layer. And just to show how this works, there's a um, the first light uh, renders here. And then there's a second layer which adds another light with the additive blend. And then there's a third light. And these all render into the lights layer which uses a multiply blend and that layer will blend with the main layer beneath it which includes all the content of its own sub layers so this means that the um, uh, you effectively have two stacks of layers which render into their own parent layer and then you can process effects on the parent layers so you can pro easily process effects on entire groups of layers at once you can even add more uh, sub layers uh, beneath uh, these and go as far as you like and have uh, some really interesting new kinds of effects that you can um, create with this new feature. So we're looking forward to seeing what you can do with that. Um, let's move on. There's been more improvements to the effect system in this release. In fact we've completely rewritten the effect system. Uh, hopefully you won't notice anything different about your existing effects but it has enabled the use of some uh, new kinds of effects. So this is the um, first person shoot, uh, sorry, first person platformer example that you might have seen previously. And you can see far away things still look the same as nearby things. One of the new kinds of effects you can add in this release is uh, fog. And that's a depth based effect, which essentially means the further away something is, uh, the more it fades out. So I'm now just going to add a fog effect to that layer. I'm going to make the color the same as the uh, layer background color and just reduce the fog density a little bit so we can see a bit further. And now when I preview the project, you can see that uh, far away things are now faded out. 
and this creates quite a different kind of atmosphere for this kind of game. So for 3D games, uh, there's this new kind of category of effect of depth-based effects, such as fog. There's another one called depth stripe, which you can play with, uh, but fog will probably be the main one uh, that you want to look at. Uh, in addition to those new kinds of depth effects, which are also available in the SDK, by the way, so third-party add-ons can also make use of depth, uh, we've also added support for effects to the 3D shape object. This was not previously supported under the old effect system, but is now supported with a new effect system. So, uh, for example, I can now take this first-person shooter example and add an effect to the 3D shapes which are used uh, for the scenery. And uh, uh, an easy effect to demonstrate is adjust HSL, which can be used to change the colors. And now if I change the color of all of them to a sort of uh, more sort of pink or purple hue, uh, that effect now alters the 3D shape object. And if I run the game, you can see now that the effect has changed the appearance of all those 3D shape objects. So previously you couldn't use effects on 3D shapes. Uh, that is now supported and is another thing you can use to add a bit more interesting visual appearance to your 3D games with the Construct's relatively new 3D features. Um, the new effect system also fixes some long-standing issues. Uh, the full details are in the release notes as always. And uh, as ever, we've got a batch of new examples which you can find if you click the More category on the Start page and choose the New tag. Uh, and many of these also make um, interesting use of the new 3D features, so check them out. Here's one of my favourite ones, is Ghost Racer. So it's just a little um, kind of retro style neon 3D racing game. Uh, nice and simple, but it looks really cool. Um, have a play with that one and check out all the other ones. Um, that's all I'm going to cover in this video for now. We hope you enjoy this release. Um, have a happy holiday season and um, as ever, see the full release notes for everything else. There's been loads new in this release as ever. Uh, I've only covered a few of the um, highlights. Um, thanks and see you next time.